Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, and here we are at Random Reviews from the Overflow Room. Yes! And we are featuring, featuring still Sibelius. See the bin? Where's the bin? There's the bin. See, there it is. There's the bin. And there's like lots of Sibelius in there still, and under Sibelius is Shostakovich. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Oh yes. But now we are working our way backwards through the alphabet and Sibelius it is. Um, here's our stack for today. And we have, well, we begin with this wonderful complete symphony cycle featuring Alexander Gibson and the Scottish National Orchestra, which became the Royal Scottish National Orchestra. Whatever that means, it has a patent of something from some royal person. Anyway, uh, what a wonderful Sibelius cycle. It was an early Chandos digital recording, um, gorgeously recorded, beautifully luminous sonics, and the performances are just dynamite. Now, the Scottish National Orchestra at this point in its life didn't have the best string section, actually. They were, uh, it could be a little scruffy, as they are in the Sixth Symphony a little bit, but Gibson was a Sibelian to the manor born. His performances are lively and natural and completely without affectation. And the orchestra is definitely up for it. And um, well, here they are. Let me just put them here. Hang on. There you go. Three discs. Uh, they were they, these were like the joys of my my early digital collection because back in the day, you know, there weren't that many CDs, and these were out. And they they were. I know I wasn't the only one who who reveled in the beautiful sonics and the lovely performances, and I still do. They're still marvelous. I mean, particularly fine. Let's see. Uh, the first, the second symphony is great. It's not too slow. 12 minutes and 50 seconds for the finale. Yes, go for it, Gibson. The third symphony is amazing. Uh, really some wonderful performances. Absolutely wonderful. So that's nice to have. Then we've got, oh yes, this Hans Rosbaud Berlin Philharmonic recording in mono, one of his very, very few studio recordings for a major label. You get Finlandia, the Vals Triste, the Swan of Twinella, the Karelia Suite, Tapiola, and the Festivo from the Sen Historique, a beautiful disc of Sibelius stuff by such a wonderful conductor who never quite got the acclaim he deserved because he worked for most of his career with the German radio orchestras, but a fascinating guy and an amazing musician. And uh, this is a, a gem, an absolute gem. Let's see, and next, Sibelius Orchestral works with Pavo Berglund. Well, we're gonna be seeing a lot of that because I just got the big Berglund box, which we'll be talking about, which has this stuff in it. These are non-symphonies. Um, these are all with the Bournemouth Symphony. These are all the couplings and things to his Sibelius cycle in Bournemouth. They are wonderful performances. He really, he really raised the level of that orchestra. He was an orchestra trainer. Berglund was, he really was. And they sound terrific, just nice, but still a little edgy. And uh, you get, well, like everything. You have Luanotar, Pochula's Daughter on Saga, King Christian, Sweet, The Bard, Spring Song, The Swan of Twinella, Lemminkainen's Return, the Peleus and Melisande incidental music, Peleus et Melisande, yes, Kualima, which has the false triest. Kualima means death. Kualima. There we go. Wasn't that Finnish sounding? Uh, and Swan White, which is a wonderful, wonderful suite that nobody knows. There you go. Then we have here, oh, this is really, really good. This is also a wonderful disc. This is the Violin Concerto with Pekka Kusisto, a uh, fine young Finnish violinist who plays Finnish violin things, Finnishly, and Kare the Karelia Suite and Belshazzar's Feast with, uh, with uh, Segerstam and the Helsinki Philharmonic. Belshazzar's Feast is another one of those little bits of incidental music that nobody knows. It's only 14 minutes long and four movements, and it's delicious, and you'll never hear it at concert. No, 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 because people just don't play things like that. Ormandy. Oh, yeah. Ormandy's Four Legends from the Kalevala. Uh, this was a very late Ormandy because it's on EMI. It's, it's his third major label. Um, but he'd never done all four of them together before. And this was his first time. It's a very fine disc. I mean, he does reorchestrate Lemminkainen's Return. But it's interesting because, you know, in his earlier 
you know, his mono and whatnot recordings and 78 recordings of like Lemon Cunningham's return. It was faster, first of all, but he adds Tam Tam crashes and things. All that stuff is here, but it's just not as audible. It's as if he was a little embarrassed by his retouchings and doesn't bring them out as much as he used to. And you also get the Berglund Tapiola, but this one with the Helsinki Philharmonic. Um, that was, there's that. Someday there should be like an EMI Ormandy set because there was all kinds of stuff. There was a Zarathustra, there was like some Bartok and Hindemith and really kind of interesting, a select collection of items. Ah, uh, Glenn Gould. Glenn Gould, yeah, look, Glenn Gould, Sibelius piano music. Um, the three sonatinas, which are some of Sibelius's best piano works. They really are, they're wonderful pieces. And his three lyric pieces for piano called Kiliki, which is also a Nakuliki. Another wonderful, wonderful work for piano by Sibelius. It was his Opus 41. And uh, these are, you know, rare Glenn Gould. You also get Grieg's Piano Sonata. Grieg was like his cousin or something like that. So, you know, or uncle or Uncle Edvard or whatever he used to call him. And Bizet's First Nocturne and Chromatic Variations. This is weird, interesting stuff. And it's really one of Glenn Gould's best non-Bach CDs. First of all, because he takes the music relatively seriously. I mean, you know, for Glenn Gould, I mean, he took it all seriously, but I mean, he plays it more or less closer to what the composer probably wrote. At least I think he does. And, uh, you know, for those of you who are you know, down on Glenn Gould or not aware of his world after Bach, you really can't do better than this two disc set. And the Sibelius stuff was really, for its day, it was really adventurous because nobody played Sibelius piano music. Nobody ever. And so he did. And good for him. Uh, oh, more Beecham Sibelius. Like I said, we desperately need a Beecham Sibelius, but I mean a Beecham Sony box, frankly. Symphonies number one, well, Symphony number one, a very good performance of that. The Send Historique bits of each, and the March from the Karelia Suite with the Royal Philharmonic. Beecham was just, he's still, he's, he's, I, I worry. He was such a great conductor. He seems to be falling into desuetude. Recording wise, I don't know why, but his the major labels that had his work are not giving him the love he deserves. We need a big remastered Beecham box badly. We badly need the Beecham box, you know, get the alliteration. The Beecham box badly is needed. Yes, let's do it. Somebody before it's too late, it may be too late soon. Ah, Sibelius, Snufrid, cantatas and orchestral works with Osmo Venska. You get Snifrid, which has a narrator and a choir, the overture in A minor, the coronation cantata, uh, Rakastava, oh, that's beautiful, the lava, Oma Ma, which, that's my, my country, whatever that is, and the Andante Festivo with the Lotte Symphony Orchestra. This is all in the Sibelius edition that Bis put out. Now we've got, oh, we've got some more, some more of the Chando stuff. We have the Four Legends and Luanotar and the Bard with Alexander Gibson and the Scottish National Orchestra. Really fine. See, they weren't royal when they did this. This was a non-digital Chandos recording. Um, and you also get Luanotar and the Bard. And Luanotar is with Phyllis Brynjolfsson. And it's the best Luanotar ever. The singing is just unbelievably. I mean, Phyllis Brynjolfsson was a modern music specialist, but she was a modern music specialist who also had a nice voice. I mean, so many of these contemporary music singers, you know, you know, um, what was Anna Russell said about contemporary music for the singer with no voice, contemporary music's the thing. Well, no, she had a voice and perfect intonation. And this is the kind of piece that really needs it. It's really a fabulous performance of that. The Lemon Kynans are really good too, but, but boy, that Luana Tar just knocked my socks off. And then we've got something uh, that didn't make it into the two disc tone poem set. Um, we've got the two suites of Sen Historique with Gibson and Scottish National and Rakastava, the suite, and the Vols Lyrique. Really beautiful stuff. We could use really a nice sort of refurbished Gibson Sibelius box when you think about it, because you've got all the tone poems, you've got all the symphonies, you've got these two discs of stuff um, that really you could make a very nice one, two, three, four, five, five, five or, or, or six disc set um, that would be gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, Sibelius tone poems and incidental music with Yol Levy and the Atlanta Symphony on Telarc. We also need a levy box. Oh God, we need boxes and boxes and boxes, don't we? 
That's what we need. We need boxes. You have the Karelia Suite, Ansaga, Pochiela's Daughter, The Swan of Twinella, and Finlandia. Lovely performances. Pochiela's Daughter, I would like to be just a hair quicker, maybe. This is 14 minutes. It's a little bit on the slow side. But still, they're fine performances. Wonderfully recorded, of course. It's Telarc. And um, these are nice to have. He also did a couple symphonies, too, for this label. So there you have it, my friends. A nice pile of Sibelius and so much more to come. So keep on listening and take care.